Take my life and let it be All for you and for your glory Take my life and let it be yours Hello Forever Family. This evening we're going to talk about a really interesting and challenging concept as we talk about the importance of God's Spirit working through us rather than simply His power being kind of stored within us. We've already established in our past discussions about the fact that we have no power on our own. That any power that we possess, we possess because God has gifted it to us. It may be talents that you have, like Jesus discusses in Matthew chapter 25. It may be spiritual gifts that you're blessed with that Paul teaches us in Romans 12 and 1 Corinthians 12 is given to every member of the church for the benefit of the body as a whole. But what's really important is that not only we recognize that God has blessed us with these gifts, with these talents, and He is the source of that blessing, but also that we be willing to use those blessings. One of the best ways that I can think of to illustrate this is to talk about the difference between potential and kinetic energy. And if that sounds a little technical, uh, give me a second and allow me to illustrate what I'm talking about. Allow me to illustrate this with a couple of simple examples. Uh, here's the first one. Here's a box of matches. I take a match out and this match has potential energy. Technically, I think it would be called chemical energy. Uh, this match can light fires. This match can do all kinds of things, but only when that chemical energy is released, only when that chemical energy is put into motion. And so when I strike the match and you see the flame, now no longer is that energy potential. Now, that energy is kinetic. That is energy in motion. And it's now producing thermal energy. And so there's a world of difference between potential energy and kinetic energy. Now allow me to give you another second simple example. Um, here's, a, here's a golf ball. A golf ball, again, has only potential energy because the ball's not in motion. The ball's not doing anything. But I can change this potential energy into kinetic energy very simply. All I have to do is lay the golf ball down, take this putter, and now the ball's in motion. Now it has kinetic energy. And that's not very impressive, but if a pro was to put that ball on a tee and strike that ball with a driver, and then unfortunately somebody 300 yards down the fairway is standing in the wrong place at the wrong time, and that ball hits them, believe me, they will notice a considerable transfer of kinetic energy to them. It has the potential to really hurt them. Again, another example of potential versus kinetic energy. Now let me make a spiritual application to the two examples that we've just seen. In all of our lives, we are blessed with incredible, I believe, potential energy. God has gifted every one of us with certain talents. Again, like Matthew chapter 25 teaches. He has also gifted us with spiritual gifts uh, as the Spirit wills, according to Romans 12 and 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Gifts which we can use to bless and benefit the body. But the issue is, are we going to allow that power to flow through us and to use that power to bless the lives of others and bring glory to God? Or are we just going to store it up and leave it untapped and unused. When you go into the Bible and you, and you look at uh, examples of individuals, I, I think one of the most powerful examples that you can find of, of someone with, with potential energy who is 
kind of afraid to turn it into kinetic energy, if you would, spiritually, it's Moses. Does Moses have tremendous potential to be an incredible leader of the people of God? He absolutely does. Okay, no question about it. But is he afraid to tap that potential? Is he afraid to allow God to use him to lead the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt? The answer is obviously yes. Look at his reluctance in Exodus chapter 3, how he comes up quickly with this excuse, well, God, I just can't talk well. Now, of course, God will remove that excuse and say, listen, I'll let Aaron do the talking for you, but I want you to lead my people. And, and Moses will acquiesce to that. Moses will allow God to work through him to lead his people in an amazing way for 40 years. But he had to be willing to put his own self-doubt aside, his own questioning aside, and allow God to control him and use him to accomplish his purpose. Um, when I was a kid, uh, there, was a, there was a man who led singing in the congregation that we attended at the time. His name was Joe Bright. Uh, Joe has long since gone to be with the Lord, but I'll never forget Joe. Joe had a beautiful voice. He was an incredible song leader, but Joe stuttered. He had a horrific problem was stuttering. It was very, very difficult for him to hold a conversation. And when he was nervous, it got even worse. And so he was really hesitant to lead singing because it embarrassed him to get up and, 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 and try to announce a song number. It took a lot of love and a lot of encouragement from a lot of people Telling him, Joe, we don't care. We don't care. We love the way you lead singing. You've got a beautiful voice. Uh, if it takes you a while to get the number out, don't worry about it. Just, we want you to lead singing. For him to get past the embarrassment, uh, to deal with his pride, and to go, you know what? I I'm going to lead singing because God's given me a gift to do that, and I'm, I'm going to do it. And he blessed so many people with his song leading. I was privileged to know Joe for a long time because eventually he moved to a different state, but we moved to the same state, and occasionally we would cross paths. And Joe continued to lead singing and continued to bless the lives of people for a long time. And he continued to have this issue with stuttering, but he didn't let that stop him. He, he, he used the potential that God had given to him and turned it into kinetic spiritual energy that blessed the lives of a lot of people. Through the years, I've seen a lot of people that I believe have tremendous potential to make a real difference for the kingdom of God, but it's all stored energy. It's all potential energy because of self-doubt or fear or pride or, you know, they're, they don't want to release it. They, they, they don't want to use it. They don't want to be the conduit through which God can be honored and, and served in, in the lives of other people. Bless, they're hesitant to do that. And it's a shame. The challenge that, that all of us face is to let go and to let God. To understand that power really is made perfect in weakness. That it's when we turn our lives over to God and we give Him control and we say, God, I see and I recognize that you've blessed me with these talents. You've, you've given me these abilities. Please use me to use them to bring you glory and to bless the lives of others. When that happens and we're all willing to do that, it's going to be amazing what the Church of Christ is going to be able to do on this earth. So I would encourage you to, to, to talk about this topic today and, and, and to work through this and, and let's share ways in which we can tap this potential energy that we have, that God has given to us in ways that will produce a kinetic spiritual energy that will bring Him glory and expand the kingdom of God. God bless you. Thank you. Glory to God forever.